Hi, everyone. I'm Carrick. This is another class focused on restorative poses. There is another longer class. It's, it's really long. It's about an hour. And there's, there's five poses that I do for five minutes each. One of the poses you do twice because there's two sides. Um, and then it takes me a while to talk you into the pose. So it's about an hour practice. This is much shorter, only two poses. Um, these are, this is for after a run, um, just to relax the body. The point of these poses is not to stretch. So these are, this is not a stretch class. Um, it's not to lengthen your hamstrings or to, to stretch your quads. It is to release the hamstrings and to release the quads, to soften and let everything relax. Okay, so here's the first pose. Um, you'll need a bolster or you can also use blocks and a blanket. Um, the idea here is, and technically, my wife says this is not a restorative pose. She says it's a yin pose. Yin meaning yin and yang is, uh, yin is like the softer side, and then the yang is like the active side. Uh, and she says that this is just a more passive pose, but she doesn't consider it a restorative pose. So I just want to put that out there. Um, here's what we're trying to do. Um, the hip flexors, right, the, the muscles that help you pull your knee up, like when you're running, when you're jumping, uh, when you're moving your legs, can get really tight. And so what we're trying to do is we're relaxing the hip flexors. So you're going to lay down over a bolster. You could also do this um, two blocks with a blanket, like draped over the blocks. Okay, um, Be a little creative here. But you want your the tops of the thigh bones, so the femur is this big bone in your thigh. You want the very top of the femur to push up. Move back. So the tops of the femurs supported by the bolster and they're being pushed up towards the ceiling. All right, I'm gonna set a timer, um, just five minutes, which might seem like a long time, but you're not doing anything. There's no um, action, you're just relaxing for about five minutes. So you'll hear a bell in a moment. All right, you can make your, you can do whatever's comfortable with your arms, I don't really, you can ha have your hands by your sides and just turn your head to one side. Um, keep the tops of your feet on the ground so uh, the legs stay in neutral. Um, there might be a tendency for your toes to flop out. Um, you're not going to get quite the, the effect that we're going for. So we're trying to get the femurs to set straight up so my butt should be sticking up relative to uh, my chest. Um, the femurs are being lifted by the bolster, and I'm just letting everything else be heavy. Here's some other options. Um, you could just put your hands together and rest your forehead on your hands if this feels good. You can turn your head to one side, and then maybe halfway through, turn your head to the other side. Just whatever is going to make you feel comfortable, okay? So I like my head turned to one side. I'm going to rest my arms above my head. Okay, and then there's nothing to do here. Just relax. We're trying to drop into the parasympathetic nervous system, which is the, the part of the nervous system that slows things down, helps us to clear the, uh, the stress of the day, helps us to relax. So just soften. Let yourself be heavy into the mat and let the bolster support your the tops of your thighs and lift them up. And then the idea here is that the hip flexors release. They get really soft, relaxed. Keep the knees pointing down. And you shouldn't have to tr try to hold that very much. Just align the tops of your feet down and the kneecaps pointing down. And then rest. And then I'm not going to teach. I'm just going to let you listen to your breath and listen to your body. And then any noise that you have, uh, just turn the volume down physically, mentally. Let things quiet down. Turn the volume down. Rest.
slide your hands under your shoulders and then come up onto your hands and knees. One more pose. Um, you'll need one of two things, either a wall um, or a chair. Um, the next pose is simply to take your legs up the wall, and I'll show you for a moment. Um, side saddle up to the wall. I'm going to grab my timer. Okay, so you get your hips, sit up against the wall with one hip against the wall, and then you're going to take your legs up the wall as you lie back. Okay, and then again, the intention here is not to get your biggest hamstring stretch ever. So for me, if I push my thighs to the wall and flex my feet legs straight and I'm bent at a 90 degree angle, I feel a lot of stretch in the backs of my legs and I'm not very relaxed. So here are a couple of things that I can do to relax. The idea is just to get the feet up, literally with your feet up, not on the ground. Um, you take away your ability for fight or flight, right? You can't run away right now, not very easily anyway, and you can't really fight from this position either. So um, we're forcing ourselves into a very vulnerable position, into a position um, of relaxation, okay? Getting the feet up. So from here, this might be a lot for some of you, um, especially if the hamstrings, the backs of your legs, your upper legs are really tight. So you could do this pose if you have a chair, uh, like a folding chair or dining room chair, whatever, you can rest your heels on the chair so that they're supported. Um, you could rest them on the couch. You can rest them on your coffee table. Um, just something for support. And then your feet are above your hips. They're off the ground to allow you to relax, okay? I'm going to turn back this way. A couple of other things that you could do. For me, I'm going to move a little bit off of the wall. So my hips are maybe six inches off the wall. And uh, I'm not challenging my hamstrings nearly as much, okay? And then, um, so the backs of my heels on the wall, and then I'm just a little bit off of the wall. A couple of other things that you could do, um, some of you might like taking your feet wide. If this starts to stretch or stress the inner thighs, your adductors, that's going to be too much. Um, the intention is not to get the stretch here, uh, at least not for this particular pose for this class. Um, so if this starts to stretch your inner thighs, then I don't suggest this variation. You can also bring your feet together and relax. Um, again, if this stresses the inner thighs, then this is not the best position to take. So for me, I'm going to go to, um, I'm going to go to about here. And where's the time? Okay. So uh, I'm going to allow my feet to fall open, just taking my legs up the wall. And my knees are soft. I'm not locking them at all. Uh, my feet kind of naturally go out, so I'm going to allow them to do that. Um, if, if you'd like, you can, you can put a little bit of a padding under your hips, um, you know, yoga mat or uh, even a blanket. Um, you don't want to elevate the hips too much for this particular pose. There are poses where you do elevate the hips, um, but you, you can pad the hips. Um, we're only going to be here for five minutes, so I'm going to be okay on the on the harder surface. But if I was going to be here for, say, 10, 15 minutes, I'd probably want to put something under my sacrum, um, just even if it was just a, a blanket or a towel or something. Okay, I'm going to start the clock now. Arms by the sides. Turn your palms up. You can have the hands just, just kind of naturally by your sides. Your arms aren't way out to the sides, um, but they're not squeezing in towards your hips either. They're just sort of falling naturally by your sides. Feet about as wide as your outer hips. Just let the feet go out so you're not holding your feet. Like if you make me point my toes forward, I would have to hold this. And I'm not trying to push them out either. I'm just letting them be relaxed. And then close your eyes. Just for a second, wiggle your shoulder blades onto your back and then soften. The idea is to soften everywhere, to release and let go of any tension. There's nothing to do except be quiet, to be soft, to relax, to allow yourself to be supported by the ground and the wall.
Let the breath be soft. And you can listen to whatever is, is happening in the room or outside the room uh, and just let those sounds come in. Imagine that you could turn the volume down on the sounds. You're also welcome to listen to music or just um, cancel the noise out somehow if that helps you. So whatever helps you to relax. Um, very often in a restorative yoga class, there will be soft music, um, but nothing very stimulating and nothing that's going to distract you from relaxing. Enjoy the rest. Just about probably three more minutes or so. Start to deepen your breath. Move your toes and your fingers. And then reach your arms over your head. Just an easy stretch here. Push your heels up and stretch out through your fingertips. One at a time, pull your knees into your chest and roll to your right side. Pause to feel the effects of just slowing down and relaxing for a little bit. I hope you feel a little heavier a little softer, a little more relaxed. Not necessarily ready to go out and uh, hit the pavement or practice or ready for game day, but, but in just the opposite. Relaxed in a, a state of passivity. Passivity. 
you can stay there or push your way up to seated. So I, I do feel like, as an athlete, I'm pretty good at warming up and gearing up and getting ready for, um, you know, to climb or to to play or to do whatever I'm doing. Um, I'm not as practiced on the other side. Sure, we we might cool down in yoga and do a couple of twists and forward bends and things, um, but the this restorative practice is kind of like. Um, so I'm good at gearing up for the day, grabbing my coffee, uh, getting ready to get out the door, um, revving myself up for the day. And then when I get home at night, I'm maybe, you know, going through social media or watching TV, and I'm not as conscious about how I'm winding down at the end of the day, except for when I do some of these poses. So this is just a very conscious way of calming down, slowing down, relaxing. Um, so I hope that these couple of poses were helpful. Um, th these are my favorites for after running, specifically after running. And then again, there's another class um, that's a longer format class with more poses that you can try. You can also do these poses for longer periods of time. These were very short. Five minutes is not that long at all. Um, really to drop into the parasympathetic nervous system, they say, they, say that you know 10 minutes just to drop into the parasympathetic to relax and then another five minutes to stay to be in the parasympathetic and, and allow those benefits to happen cortisol levels to drop stress hormones to drop um, allow the muscles to relax um, it takes a longer period of time so you can do like one pose for 15 minutes or um, you know two poses for 10 minutes each um, play with these a little bit doesn't always have to be like five poses for an hour, it can be, you can sort of play with how you, you use the restorative yoga poses to relax your body. Okay, that's it. Thank you for practicing with me. I will see you next time.